Hey everyone, my name is Nadav Merlis and I'll present a work on tight lower bound for combinatorial multi-arm bandits. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Professor Shai Mano. I'll start with a very quick re recap on multi-arm bandits. In the map setting, uh, at each round, the agent selects a single arm out of n possible arms and then observes feedback for the arm he chose. It goes to minimize its regret, which is the expected difference between the reward of the best arm and the cumulative uh, reward of uh, the agent's actions. Uh, so in the combinatorial case, or the CMAB uh, case, uh, instead of selecting a, a single arm on each round, the agent selects a set of up to K arms, and then observes feedback for each of the arms he chose, which is also called the semi-banded feedback. The goal is still minimizing its regret, uh, the regret, but in this case, the regret is with respect to some known, but uh, possibly non-linear reward function. So let's look at some concrete examples. Uh, probably the most prevalent example is the linear reward functions that is related to problems such as uh, routing. In this uh, specific example, uh, the arms in the problem are uh, road parts, and the actions that the agent uh, chooses is a complete path from the source to the target. Another very common example is the probabilistically maximum coverage problem, or the PMC problem. And in this case, we have a bipartite graph, and the agent selects a set of nodes at one side of the graph, with the goal to reach as many nodes on the other side of the graph through probabilistically triggered edges. The arms in this case are actually the edges of the graph. So let's talk a bit about algorithms. Uh, from the UCB side, there's Z CUCB that uses uh, hoffling based confidence intervals. And there's BCUCB uh, that we presented last year in cold and uses Benson based confidence intervals. Uh, from the Thomson sampling side, there's CTS. Uh, both algorithms depend on one of, of two performance criteria, smoothness criteria. Uh, UCB and CTS uh, uh, depend uh, in, in performance uh, on the global Lipschitz constant of the reward function. And BC UCB depend on the gene weighted smoothness, which we will explain more fully in the next slides. Uh, importantly, uh, the gene smoothness can be lower bounded by the uh, global Lipschitz constant, which uh, make uh, the regret bounds uh, using the gene smoothness tighter than the regret bounds using the global Lipschitz constant. So let's talk a bit about the intuition uh, behind the Gini smoothness. And to understand it, we need to understand a key step uh, in any regret or any analysis for combinatorial bandits, which is translating uncertainty on R parameters due to the feedback on specific arms into uncertainty in reward values. The standard way to do so, so is using the global Lipschitz constant. So let's see what kind of effect this analysis has in uh, 1D example. This is how uh, hosting based uh, confidence interval looks like. They have the, uh, the same width for around the parameter space. So if we translate uh, them into a water uncertainty using the global Lipschitz constant, we get something like this. Uh, so this look uh, relatively uh, wide, so we would like to do something tighter. And the most reasonable way to do so is to use a tighter confidence interval. So this is how Bernstein-based confidence intervals look like. They are uh, tighter around the edges of the domain. And uh, if we translate them into a reward uncertainty using the global Lipschitz, we get something like this, which is uh, tighter around the edges of the domain, but at its center, it actually has the same width as uh, hosting base. So we didn't actually solve the problem. So to do something better, we actually need to uh, look at things from a different perspective. Let's look again at the Bernstein-based confidence interval. And uh, notice that the problematic regime is around the center of the domain. But in this area, the gradient of the reward function of this reward functions, uh, are, uh, the gradient uh, is relatively small. So even if uh, we have high parameter uncertainty, it shouldn't cause too large reward uncertainty. On the other end, the, the area where the gradients are very large is the lower end of the domain. But in this case, the confidence intervals are very narrow, so there's no reason to have a large reward uncertainty. So if we take a look at the real confidence intervals due to the Bernstein type uh, parameter confidence intervals, we get something like this. So the confidence intervals using the global Lipschitz actually don't really uh, capture the real uncertainty. So to conclude, if you want to uh, get uh, a real or accurate uh, reward uncertainty estimate, we need to combine 
uh, both uh, the local behavior of the confidence interval and the local behavior of the gradients. So this is the idea behind the Gini weighted smoothness. And uh, more specifically, uh, we suggested uh, weighting the gradients according to the width of the confidence intervals. Uh, specifically, Bernstein-based confidence intervals uh, are proportional to the standard deviation of arms. And for Bernoulli arms, which has the largest uh, STD for uh, distributions in bounded domain, this behaves as the square root of mu 1 minus mu for uh, arms with main mu. So weighting the gradients according to this uh, kind of terms and taking the L2 norms actually leads to the gene smoothness and to the improved regret bounds that we already saw. And if we'll go back to our examples, uh, we actually observed that uh, BCUCB achieved uh, tight performance on both, uh, both uh, examples up to algorithmic factors. So the only question that remains is asking whether we're done. Uh, it seems like we have upper bounds and lower bounds, so we can move to improving logarithmic factors or to other variants. So for the linear and the PMC problem, in this specific uh, problem uh, definition, we are roughly done up to the logarithmic factors. But uh, what about other reward functions? What about a norm function, a logistic function, or maybe even a Gaussian function? We actually have no idea if we're done or not because we have no lower bounds for this problem. So until we ha we'll have more general lower bounds for the problem, uh, we don't actually know if the upper bounds are, are really tight or not, or they are tight for specific instances. So in this work, we aim to close this gap and approve uh, general lower bounds under the mildest assumptions as possible. So let's talk a bit about our assumptions. Similar to the uh, upper bounds we, we saw, we would like our lower bounds to depend only on the parameters mu and the gradients of the reward function. And to do so, we assume an assumption that we call index invariance. So this assumption means that uh, the reward function only depends on values of the arms the agent uh, choose, and not on the order of the arms or on uh, the specific index of an arm. So this covers all of the examples we already saw and most of the practical examples. So to explain why this assumption is uh, useful, let's take a look at uh, the best uh, linear reward function. Uh, it's actually possible to show that for large enough bias uh, towards specific arms, the optimal action doesn't even depend uh, on the arm parameters. And we can uh, know just by looking at the function what is the optimal action. So in this case, both the upper and the lower bounds equal zero. Uh, so just by adding bias, we made the problem that was highly non-trivial in terms of upper and lower bounds in, uh, into a trivial problem. So and this, uh, all of this without changing the gradients or the dependence in the arm parameters. So to conclude, uh, without this assumption, the reward bound cannot solely depend on the arm parameters or on the gradients of uh, the reward function. And we also quite naturally assume that the reward function is differentiable. So let's go over our main results. We assume that uh, the actions are of size k and denote by i some subset of the arms of size smaller than k. And we also work with uh, the modified Gini weighted smoothness, which is a variant of the Gini smoothness we already saw that also depend on the set I. I will not present the full formula since it's a bit more complicated. Uh, but using this uh, modified uh, Gini smoothness, we can derive lower bound that depends on, uh, depends on it and also on the set I. And specifically, if the road function is also monotone, uh, we can uh, further lower bound this term and get lower bounds that depend on the gene smoothness we already saw earlier up to logarithmic factor. So these bounds actually match the upper bound uh, of BCUCB uh, up to logarithmic factors. So let's go a bit into the proof technique. Uh, like in most lower bounds paper, our goal is to build hard instances on which we show the lower bounds. And for combinatorial bandits, this is usually done uh, by reduction to a map problem, since the literature on uh, lower bounds in the map setting is very wide. And this reduction is usually done by carefully designing an action set S. Let's look, for example, for the, on the lower bounds for linear reward function. 
And there, the, all of the arms were divided into M over K, completely disjoint arms. And on the other end, for the PMC problem, uh, for simplicity when covering a single node, uh, there were K minus one arms that uh, appeared in all different actions. And only a single arm varied between uh, different actions. So there were K, M uh, minus K different uh, actions. So the difference between the two specific builds is that in the linear function, there are very few actions, but each of them is very random since it has very a lot of different arms. But in the PMC problem, there are much more actions, but each of them is much less random since there's only one arm different between actions. So we generalize both action sets into something we call I disjoint action sets. And in this kind of action sets, all arms in some subset of the arms I appear in all different actions. And these arms are independent of the rest of the arms in the problem. And all arms outside this uh, uh, set uh, can only appear in a single action. And we actually show that proving lower bounds on this kind of an action set is sufficient. So let's go more in details on the proof uh, for the lower bound. Uh, the first step is uh, building a parametric family of distribution uh, for some I disjoint uh, CMO problem, designing a very specific uh, parametric distribution. And then for this distribution, uh, uh, calculate the lower bound uh, using uh, tools from the Bandit literature. Finally, when we have uh, the lower bounds, we maximize over all uh, of the different uh, distribution of the uh, of all of the different parameters of the distribution and over all of the possible I disjoint action set. And this kind of maximization leads to the desired lower bound. Uh, for more on reward functions, uh, required uh, a bit more notation. I first recall that the Gini smoothness uh, can be uh, observed as uh, some sort of a weighting of the gradient of the reward function. And we also uh, denote uh, the P norm with respect to uh, some subset uh, of uh, indices A by the P norm of, on, of elements only uh, in this uh, subset of indices. So the first step is to show that for Morton reward function, uh, the complicated part in the general lower bound uh, can be lower bounded by the maximum over all subsets of the squared L1 norm of uh, components in the, the subset penalized by the size of the subset. Uh, so we would like, uh, and all of this for the uh, vector uh, that uh, contains uh, the weighted uh, gradients. So we would like to relate it to the L2 norm of this vector, which is related to the Gini smoothness, and do so using this new to the best of our knowledge uh, norm inequality that actually relates this maximum uh, logarithmically to the L2 norm of uh, the full vector. Uh, notice that this inequality improves the standard norm inequality that uh, would have resulted uh, in a linear relation between uh, the two terms. So using this norm inequality for uh, the weighted gradients uh, actually concludes the proof. Okay, so to summarize, uh, in this work we presented new lower bounds for uh, CMO problems told under very mild assumptions, index invariance and differentiability. And specifically for Morton reward functions, we show that our lower bounds match the upper bounds of BCUCB up to logarithmic factors. And so that's it. Thank you for listening and feel free to contact us if you have any questions about our work.